Welcome to episode 11 of Digital Innovation Talks. My name is Peace Odili, and I'll be your host for today. I am the Executive Director at Emerging Communities Africa. We are a nonprofit that is focused on uh, catalyzing technology development to solve entrepreneurship and social challenges in underserved communities in Africa. Uh, we're based in Akure City, Ondo States, in Nigeria. Digital Innovation Talks is the theme of our African EU VidCast series. Uh, for those wondering what a VidCast is, it is simply a podcast that contains video content. Uh, so this series includes uh, 12 monthly episodes. Um, we started in April 2022, and each episode will explore different topics related to the EU, African digital innovation hubs, and startup ecosystems. Uh, for those wondering, uh, for those watching for the first time, uh, African EU is a project that aspires to create the first transcontinental networking academy to support African and European digital innovation hubs in capacity building, knowledge sharing, networking, collaboration, joint projects, and venture development. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program and is implemented from February 2021 uh, till January 2024. It involves four partners from Africa and seven partners from Europe. So let's start. The topic for our episode today is Building Africa-Focused Communities of Best Practice. Let me introduce you to our guest for today. He is the founder and director of Ventures 54 and co-founder of the London Africa Network. Welcome, Anthony. Can you tell us more about you, Ventures 54, and the London Africa Network? Hey, peace, and hello, everybody tuning in or watching this back after it's been recorded. And thank you to Africon E for having uh, me for today's um, vidcast. Um, so my name, as mentioned, is Anthony Cat. I'm the co-founder of Ventures 54. Very quickly, we're an organization that works with governments, DFIs to mobilize international capital from around the world to help deploy it across the African continent, specifically working with international investors in the venture capital space who are looking to enter for the first time or expand capacities across the African continent to support uh, tech startups by investing in them. And then the London Africa Network is a non-for-profit community based out of London and the UK that serves as a space for people working in technology startups, investment for technology startups, government and corporate supporting technology and the creative sectors that work between the UK and various markets across Africa. And it's really a neutral melting pot for these people to come together for quarterly meetup events in London, but it's also an online community where they can connect, share and learn. But overall, between the two organizations, I'm focused on helping build bridges uh, between the UK and various markets across Africa to support the growth of startup ecosystems uh, within the continent. Oh, that's great. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, so during the last few weeks, we got in touch with our community members and followers, and we collected some very interesting questions for you. Uh, so uh, let us see what the audience would want us to know. I, I do trust that we're going to have very insightful uh, conversations here today. So question yeah, one. Yeah, uh, some questions. Bring them on. Yes, yes. Question one says, uh, can you share your experience with uh, building communities of best practice in Africa and what motivated you to pursue this work? Because while you introduced yourself, you mentioned somewhere around uh, how you connect that bridge, you know, between UK and Africa. So please let us know. Yeah, so I guess taking a step back from the community of best practice, the kind of implementation of that, looking at part about what, what motivated me to be in this space. I visited Sudan in 2015 as a volunteer of the UK government delegation with no real perception for what the ecosystem would be like there. And what stood out for me when I was on the ground meeting entrepreneurs was the fact that these entrepreneurs were building incredible businesses in very challenging environments, whether that's socially, economically, um, resource constraints, um, or natural uh, environmental challenges, depending on what the business was doing. But what I saw was incredibly industrious entrepreneurs that were still coming up with solutions despite these challenges. 
And what I kind of observed was there were a lot of resources we had in the West, particularly in Europe, established startup ecosystems, which if brought into these ecosystems across the African continent, could make a real difference in accelerating the growth of these very successful entrepreneurs who've already succeeded in challenging environments. Of course, that meant you needed to contextualize that resource because not all that resource and support is going to be applicable when it needs to actually be localized. And that kind of started me in my journey of work that I've been doing that's culminated in Venture 54 and the London Africa Network. And it's really been about how do you share that best practice, not just bringing that from Europe and the West, but also bringing that from the continent around how these entrepreneurs have thrived in challenging environments and we can apply some of that learning into the UK. And so from a best practice standpoint, regardless of what communities you're building um, and the bridges you're creating, the primary focus is right now, while the ecosystem across Africa is still in that nascency period, it's just creating awareness, awareness of who is who, who are people operating in this space, what are they doing? Because then often people connect the dots themselves and can ultimately uh, successfully go on to do things. You just need to create the environment where they can be aware of each other and informally connect and work things out. Uh, thank you so much. If I have to take something out of that, it would be the localization of the res results as much as ensuring entrepreneurs thrive in a changing environment. Uh, thank you for the work that you do. So question two says, uh, um, why is it important to have Africa-focused communities of best practice in areas such as uh, uh, startups, tech, uh, and investments outside the continent? Yeah, so going back to the point I said before around this kind of, it's a two-way street of learning and sharing and resource building. But if you look at any successful uh, startup tech and investment ecosystem around the world, they are globalized communities where businesses have a footprint across the world. Investors have come from other regions and continents to invest in them. And if you're going to scale and grow these businesses, you need that global best practice. So when it comes to, say, the London Africa network that we've built, a lot of our members aren't originally from Africa. They, they worked in the UK, they're from the UK, and they're building businesses and organizations engaging with markets across Africa. And then vice versa, we have entrepreneurs, investors, and other ecosystem leaders on the continent that are looking to expand globally and see the UK as a great springboard to do that. So the importance of having these hubs from off the continent is to give those landing points for the ecosystems in Africa to actually expand globally. And again, it goes back to this point that you're not trying to do the work for them. You're just trying to create the platform for them to be aware of who is who, what resources they can plug into. But conversely, give that spotlighting stage presence almost with these platforms. So when these entrepreneurs and founders and investors come off the continent, everybody can be aware of who they are and find the best way to engage with them. And then in turn, that becomes another way to pull that international resource and talent back onto the uh, continent through those that have come from across Africa into those communities like the London Africa Network. And it becomes that bridge for innovation and connection above and beyond just what's happening in the UK, but actually allows that landing point back on the continent as well. Uh, thank you, Anthony. I like how you mentioned that you don't intend to do the work for them, but then they need to also know that to scale businesses, you have to put, take into consideration global best practice. Uh, thank you, Anthony. So uh, another question says, um, how can we build effective communities that bridge uh, that gap between African entrepreneurs and, and investors? Yeah, so as the kind of markets across Africa, particularly like Nigeria, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa, are seeing a massive um, increase in venture capital and investment funding coming into their startup ecosystem. We're now seeing a lot more investors from off the continent want to enter the, the African space. But the challenges are, the reality is on the continent, there are far higher risk factors when investing on the continent. There isn't as much data and understanding of how to do the due diligence and assess businesses. And there isn't that historical data showing huge successful outcomes in terms of successful starts growing, which means there's often less of an appetite for investors to enter those markets, or certainly it takes a lot longer for them to warm to doing so. So what's really important with these kind of community best practice and bridge building is helping investors from off the continent to actually understand who is it they need to be partnering with on the ground, who can de-risk these things, who have that understanding, that knowledge, who can be that longer term bet for them to build their own presence 
on the continent, whether that be local investors that they invest into or co-invest alongside, but also tech hubs and other ecosystem leaders, those at Africon EU often are working with that actually can be their kind of forward base for doing that research. But equally for the founders on the continent, as they've been needing to grow in scale, if they are to access international global capital, they've got to have continent-wide or global ambitions to scale and grow their business. And that means that they've got to start having a footprint elsewhere across the world, whether that be in the UK, that be in, in Asia, or that be in the US. And so having the ability to actually have some kind of physical presence or certainly be well connected into those communities that are off the continent is really, really crucial for them if they're going to go and actually raise that scaling capital. But hopefully what that also does then is it will pull those investors globally into the continent because it starts to de-risk it for them because they understand better how these, these businesses operate, the cultural considerations, the social economic considerations by working with founders that have actually come off the continent and engage them as well. So it's very much a two-way street. But the goal really has to be how do we de-risk more of the opportunities on the continent, create the stories and success stories that will allow more investors to be aware of what's going on and in turn invest into the startups um, that fit them and hopefully then bring more capital directly into the space. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, these success stories are really important and I hope that entrepreneurs will take advantage of that fact where they have to know who to partner with, especially for the long term. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, another question is, uh, what role do you see tech technology playing in creating and sustaining these communities? Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan and proponent of meet in person. Let's get in a room together, whether it's, you know, a formal presentation or we're having a coffee or a beer. But the reality is when we're building global communities, we can't all be in the room at the same time. So with the London Africa Network, we started off as an in-person meetup group. It started with like 40 people. It now goes up to about 150 people per event. We do one a quarter. But the reality is a lot of people who are engaged in our community can't always make those events or aren't even based in London and the UK. So having a virtual presence is really, really important, particularly for those that might say, hey, I don't have the, the money or the time or commitment to come from, say, Europe to a market in Africa yet, or vice versa, but I want to explore the space and build the case for why I should. So using um, online space and communities, very simply from communication channels, like most best communities I've seen, some of them just use WhatsApp. You have WhatsApp groups where people connect and communicate, or a bit more advanced, use a Slack channel like you would in your business where people could share opportunities. We do that at London Africa and have a several different groups within our Slack channel for the specific conversations you want to have. Um, right through to also having like a members directory where we have an online directory of who the members are, where they can share opportunities. So again, we're not doing the heavy lifting. All we're doing is creating an environment where you can be aware of who is who, communicate with each other and share opportunities, and we can take a step back. And I think that's, again, what a successful community is. It just creates the environment and space where people can be aware of each other and connect the dots very easily to do those things. And then hopefully doing things virtually will create opportunities where they then want to meet in person and offline, whether that's people coming from Europe and the UK in London, Africa to the continent or vice versa. Thank you so much, Anthony. A uh, successful community is creating opportunities for them and sustainability cannot be overemphasized. So therefore that virtual presence is very important. Entrepreneurs, I'm sure you're taking notes. Uh, another question is, uh, how can we ensure that these communities are inclusive and uh, representative of the uh, diverse vo voices and experiences across the African continent? Yeah, so this one, when you might have a community based in London, say you're trying to engage with 54 different countries across the continent, can um, sometimes be difficult. But it's only difficult if you're working in, in silos, right? So what we find is or i found i've seen in best practice right is firstly is building your community open and in public creating that external awareness of this is what we do this is our mission this is what we're trying to achieve and making it very clear to what this community is and isn't and then trying to promote that as much as possible then in terms of actually bringing people into community the hope is by creating that awareness you'll spark that interest and give that call to action point where people engage. You want to be a member, sign up here. You want to find out more, engage with us online. And hopefully that in itself allows for access to a diverse range of people and organizations. 
And then what you have to make sure you do is within the community itself is your conscious awareness of having that representation, where it's a geographic representation, a race representation, industry verticals, a segment representation, whatever it might be, being consciously aware of are we creating a fair and equal space for these people and organisations to engage with each other? And the final part is really making sure that then the, the leadership or those that are driving the community are representative of those people because they will inherently then drive more of that diverse representation uh, into the community itself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, creating awareness helps to enable calls to action. Thank you so much. I am particularly excited for the next question, which is, can you share some examples of successful Africa-focused communities of best practice and what actually make them successful? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to be a little bias to international networks. And, I, and for me, this is my big passion is how we're connecting international geographic organization entities into the continent and vice versa, which is a lot about why we're here on this vidcast series. So obviously I would, I would testify that the London Africa Network is a fantastic network to look at. Um, but we've also, in others in Europe, you've got the Berlin, uh, sorry, the Africa Berlin uh, network, which is a, a similar entity that's actually been running longer than the London Africa Network, who do a really fantastic job of spotlighting individuals and people within their uh, community that are doing fantastic things, both those based uh, in Germany, but also based on the continent, and have become almost a conduit between Germany and various markets, hosting delegation opportunities to go to the continent and vice versa. And again, it's building physical bridges there by doing these things and partnering with public and private uh, institutions to do so. Um, other examples on the investment side, there is a angel investing community called Hope, and they allow people to invest very small amounts of money into African-based market-serving and founded companies um, from all around the world. And their community is educating people on how to make investments into African startups, how to actually assess and demystify the things around investing in African businesses and are creating a huge spotlight for those founders, but also in turn their investors as well. So they're bringing non-traditional people into the investment space and creating those first checks into startups at the most riskiest stage, which is actually enabling more startups to raise capital. Um, other ones, Afrolabs is a really great community on the continent that actually brings together tech hubs, ecosystem leaders and players. I think they have representation in nearly every country across the continent. Um, and they do a lot of spotlighting of opportunities, but also share resources where you can get funding so that you can grow and, and make your hubs flourish. So I think there's some really good examples. And again, why? Because yes, they're bringing people together in their communities, but what they're really doing is spotlighting opportunities educating people on what's going on on the continent and enabling them easy routes to get involved in small incremental steps. And I think right now, as the African tech startup investment ecosystem grow, it is that simple. We don't need to overcomplicate things. Just create a safe space where people can understand who's doing what, share opportunities and make it as frictionless as possible for people to get involved in that. And then make sure you spotlight that to your wider network so they can get an understanding and hopefully bring more people into that space. Thank you, Anthony, uh, Spotlighting. And uh, AfriLabs is already uh, a household name in Africa, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this next question is around, uh, you know, creating awareness, virtual presence, that you've said in the last 19 minutes. And uh, it says, how can we leverage the power of social media and online platforms, you know, to build and grow these communities? Yeah, I mean, it's it's where everything kind of scales up and grows. It goes back to that point around what is the purpose of social media and these online platforms? Well, online platforms firstly allows you to engage with people remotely. And I think what's really important about that as well, and it comes back to that inclusivity part, not everybody's based in the big hubs. And just when we talk about London in the UK, well, there are several other major cities that have hubs as well. And so that's the same going to be on the continent as well, particularly when people are geographically restricted. Technology can enable them to be engaged and involved in what you're doing. But it also then means you have to put a lot of effort into your online communities, which are not easy to run. They're probably the harder part. I think putting physical events on is a lot easier. And um, the key there is to be consistent with what you're putting out. 
Um, I, I write a lot of content online, spotlighting opportunities in Africa, and I've been doing that for a couple of years. And I think the key to the success of having that is just being consistent, posting every week. So making sure whatever your online community and platform is, that you are consistently engaging, even if it's small incremental pieces. And then from a social media standpoint, it goes back to what we say about spotlighting. Actually use that to amplify the stories of people doing great things. They may be members, they may not be members of your communities, but allow people to understand who are the entrepreneurs, what they're doing, actually tell the real stories of them. Are investments being made? Who's making the investments? If it's a UK investor, that might mean if another UK investor sees a, an established UK investor who's making investments in Africa, oh, actually maybe there's an opportunity for us to do it if they're doing it. So again, it is kind of it's breaking down those barriers that people might see by showcasing what's already going on. Um, and yeah, your, your Twitters, your LinkedIn's, your Instagrams, they're all platforms. I think the one consideration when you're using social media and different mediums is looking at the markets you're addressing what might be good in the uk such as linkedin might not be as strong in certain markets across africa and it might actually be something like twitter instead so not just using platforms but making sure you understand if you're engaging certain markets across africa from the uk which platforms do they use and which platforms do they use less because there is a difference uh, and we've seen that and it's actually sometimes you have to use different ones for different audiences within your community yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Ah, so uh, time has gone and uh, we would like to have your final input or comments uh, just, you know, around the, the hopes for growth in Africa focused communities. Yeah, I think my hope is that more people realize it's easier to start and build a community that it might seem. There are some of these big communities like Afro Labs, um, Africa Arena is a great one who run big events all around the world. And yeah, these are the big scaled ones, but Facebook is a big scale company, but your startup doesn't start up like that, does it? It's a lot earlier. And so actually, if you're out there and you think there isn't a community for you in your part of the ecosystem, we'll go out and create your community. When we started the London Africa Network, we just said, hey, there doesn't seem to be like much synergy between everybody in the London space right now. So let's invite 30 people for, for a dinner. Um, and that was two years ago. And now we've grown to like a, a membership base of over 500 people. So it does start small. And so my, my hope and wish is that more people start their own localized small communities, and then you can grow them incrementally and also plug in and collaborate with other communities. And for anybody that's thinking about that, I'm always happy to chat, share best practice, and signpost them to ways in which they can go about doing that. Thank you so much, Anthony. Go out and create your communities. You've heard that. So uh, that was episode 11 of Digital Innovation Talks for the uh, African EU VCAT series. Thanks so much for watching. And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and stay up to date. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Peace. Goodbye. Bye, Anthony.